Welcome to Never Not Sailing. I'm Danielle and this is Tyler, or Captain Woodsy. Our sailing journey began from Adelaide with grand dreams to cross the Great Australian Bight and see how far we could get in a year. Turns out the Southern Ocean is a fickle beast and we couldn't achieve what we set out to do. So we're on to plan B, which is to explore West Australia by land before heading to Europe to see what kind of mischief we can manage there. Join us every Sunday as the irony of calling ourselves Never Not Sailing grows, because what happens next, nobody knows. Hello, good morning. <laughs> I'm driving, so it's my turn. Uh, we are on the road. We've left Edinburgh and we are heading up to Aberdeen. Why are we heading there, mate? Uh, so I've got a mate from university, um, uh, an old housemate actually, uh, lives up that way. So we're going to pop in there and stop there for a few nights. Not sure if there's going to be a lot of content for the for the channel, but that's just what we're doing. Um, but on the way, we're going somewhere special. We're going to a place called Stonehaven and we're going to have a local delicacy that was invented there. I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> We're going to see what it is. Um, but for those smart cookies out there, cookies, sweet, might be a bit of a hint. Uh, for those smart cookies out there, you'll know exactly what we're about to go and do to our bodies. So we're here in the Karen in Stonehaven, which is the home, the birthplace of the deep fried Mars bar. It's feckin' frizzin' and I'm in shorts. I'm getting more and more comfortable doing this. Um, so the story goes that about 25 years ago, um, a bunch of schoolboys came in and asked the um, chippy owner at the time to fry them up a Mars bar. And she did, and it was a hit, and they went back to school, and then word spread, and it's the home of the deep fried Mars bar. So apparently it's 307 calories um, and the council wanted them to take the sign down about it being the birthplace of the deep fried Mars bar because um, health and obesity rates are bad in Scotland. But the whole town rallied and said, no, we shan't, we shan't take it down. Um, so we're going to go in and get a little mid-morning snack. It's freezing. Let's go. Hi. Hello, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> what about her a bit? Pardon? The chippy owner is an absolute sweetheart. We were just having all the chats. There was no one else in that it had just opened and they said every day the first like five orders are always a deep fried Mars bar. 96% of first orders on a Saturday and Sunday, deep fried Mars deep bar. Deep fried Mars bar. We're gonna go down the beach because there's a little beach side town, but it's feckin' freezing. Um, oh, are we just gonna eat it here? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, let's. Do the break. She's like, it's bloody hot. Oh. Grief. That's outrageous, that is. Look at it, all of it. Bleed and eck. Alright, I'm obviously going to take this crispy spot. Okay, yep, yeah, sure. <laughs> in, in a white shirt. Oh, Arnie Dorr just got all the stains out in Manchester. Oh, yeah, she's good. Give us a breakdown. What are the flavours? I'm letting it burn it. Always the bloody way. Been waiting for Goshi to call for an hour. Oh, it's dead good. The nougat is all melted. The caramel's all melted. The chocolate's all melted. You're like, ugh, fried to begin. And then it just like cuts through the sweetness. Get it, girl. Aberdeen. Shipbuilders to 
get the plans sorted out for their cut the cuts that they need to build build these things but because it's a 3D shape it's hard to then translate that to a 2D piece of kit um, so they use these devices hang on and what they actually do is they trace the shape of this hull and then that transfers that onto paper so then you can then transfer that to your cut list on your, your 2D cut list and this was used by the Aberdeen shipbuilding company Hall Russell, the last one, up until 1992 when they shut down, at which point computer programming became a big deal. There's a part about catchability of fish in here, which I think you and I, but especially you, should probably read up on, seeing as we didn't catch a single thing the entire time we were at sea. Just read up on something. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Bit of warning. Hello, good morning. Where are we, mate? McVitie's. <laughs> Morgan McVeigh's. Morgan McVeigh's. Of Tilly Morgan. Of Tilly Morgan. Honestly, you'd think we'd be better at this by now. Like, alright, where are we? Call. Cool. Now let's press record. Look at the camera. Yeah. Just nah. We've got we got a shtick. We've got a shtick. Fucking idiots. Um, we're on our way to Isle of Skye this morning. I'll oh, stop eating. We're on our way to Isle of Skye. We're going to go through Inverness. Um, we've just stopped off to pee 45 minutes into our trip because it's me. Um, and we got some cheese and chav scones. Is it scone or scone? Don't be an idiot, it's a scone. Yeah, it is a scone. And I'll fight you if you try and tell me it's a scone. Yeah. <laughs> we just spent a couple of days in Aberdeen with Tyler's mates, we which did. was really lovely. Mm -hmm. And their beautiful one-year-old girl, Maya Papaya. Maya Papaya. Maya Papaya, Papaya. Um, so that was really lovely, super chill. And now we've got a couple of weeks all on our own. We've been catching up with so many people. So now we've got two weeks until we get to Galway with all my mates. And Tyler's sister's going to come and meet us there with her partner, Alex, who you've already met. So we're going to go up to Isle of Skye today. So we're going to stop through Inverness and then go through and see the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> Tyler has made us pull over on the side of the road to go chasing waterfalls, which I'm pretty sure TLC has a pretty adamant stance against. There was mention of rivers, lakes, and yet here we are doing the very thing we're cautioned not to. It looks like Hagrid's Cottage. <laughs> that is the vibe. Hello. Take a big bitch. Yep. I just ran out of here going, oh shit, it's on altitude mode, so I don't know what that means. Spare a few minutes. Got him. So we're walking around Loch Ness to find the Loch Ness monster. We couldn't send the drain up over Loch Ness, so we didn't get to get that footage and be the ones to confirm that the Loch Ness monster is real. <laughs> which is our whole cash grab scheme in the first place. We might as well pack it in and go back to Australia. <laughs> We're gonna need to soon enough. Ugh. But the story of the Loch Ness monster begins in 1933 when a couple were up at Loch Ness. Loch means lake in Gaelic or Celtic. Um, so or, Loch Ness. Or in Scots. In Scots, um, we'll fact that check that later. <laughs> um, so a couple was driving past and saw a um, large animal flailing and smashing about in the water. 
and news quickly spread and the local newspaper said that it was a monster and that Monica kind of stuck and so people flooded out here um, the London Times gave a £20,000 reward for anyone who could capture it on um, film in 1933 so obviously heaps of cash and no one could and there was apparently another sighting um, a month later and they sent sonar expeditions across the That's last serious. 90 years um, to try and capture it and while they found like flippers and all these kinds of things it's been inconclusive so um, the mystery of the Loch Ness Monster continues and we really thought that we were going to bust it wide open today. So layman's theories I've got two. One. We didn't run this past each other, so I'm interested to hear what this is. One, this is a local cash grab to get tourists to the lock. 100%, look what we're doing here. Yeah, correct. Because it's really ugly as well, I wouldn't want to so, come here otherwise. It's pretty cool. It's pretty sexy. Uh, two, did the person who saw the flailing animal swimming monster incorrectly write into the newspapers and they actually meant the monarch of the day and it was just some fat king flailing around in the lake and they saw that and that was noteworthy. What? Monarch and monster is pretty similar. The person writing in didn't call it a monster. The newspaper well, gave the it the... newspaper meant... The monarcher, the A monster. Okay. Monarcher meaning title. Maybe it's a metaphor for the monarchy. Monster. Flailing around in a Scottish lake. Well, the Queen does spend king, a lot of time in Balmoral. King Edward rude. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been King Edward back in the day. No, we're... we're shush. makes it possible for people to pop on over like so many of the little connecting islands where you've got to get ferries uh, the sky bridge makes it yeah possible for riffraff like us to pop on over yeah riffraff riffraff absolutely we're here how many pods do you think are going to be here? Is the key in the door? We're in. There's a hairy queue. All right, well, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Claustrophobic nightmare. You're sleeping against the wall. Hey, girl. Oh, they've even given us little scotchies. <gasps> not scotchies, shortbread. This better not be an induction cooker. You should, but then they have induction pots. Yeah, but our uh, <gasps> cooker. Oh, our coffee machine. And then a little bathroom. This is bloody ritzy. Good afternoon, hello. We had a luxurious evening in our pod. I made Thai green chicken curry because you can get Mayfoy green curry everywhere. Um, and we did some editing today and the weather is miserable because it's a Scottish summer then <laughs> to this outside situation. So we're venturing outside for the first time today um, with bellies full of tea and uh, not shortbread. Yeah, shortbread. And uh, we're going to go... <laughs> It's freezing, it's freezing out there. Come on. We're going to go take on the wild of um, the Scottish Highlands. Um, I can't deal with glare of any variety, so that's why I have sunglasses on. Because I'm like, yeah, <gasps> Jesus Christ! Fucking hell. <laughs> Brutal! Both the weather and the history. This sign over here says this is the bloodiest uh, location in Scotland. You're like, oh, hello, hello tourists. Please come and see my town. All right, trumpin'. <laughs> Scottish 
summer's morning here in the Isle of Skye. Hello, good morning. Uh, we are on the Isle of Skye, the beautiful Isle of Skye. Um, and one of the things that the Isle of Skye is known for is being inhabited by fairies. I don't know if, if the people know this, but it's, it's known a, a bit as the Fairy Isle. Um, this goes back a long, long way to um, one of the old clan chiefs of the, the Clan MacLeod. He was said to have married a fairy princess back in the day. Um, and that is why um, it is presumed that fairies inhabited this place. Um, so we're going to go on a little bit of a tour today. Um, and some of those tour, uh, tour stops is going to include uh, some fairy stops. So our very first stop today is going to a, uh, a place called the Fairy Glen um, and Castle Ewan. And Castle Ewan is a rock formation that looks a bit like a castle on top of a hill. Hopefully we get some good views of it. It's a bit overcast, so we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, and it's said that the fairies inhabited that place and that was their castle on the Isle of Skye. So, interesting little spot, really. Lots to see, lots to do on a very, very small island. Where the fairies live. <laughs> Sourdough bread, some oh, Kerrygold pure Irish butter, obviously. Got some cheeses and meats and coleslaw and some cracked pepper um, just to finish everything up. Oh god. Not a bad little spread. Not a bad little spread. Happy? Happy with this for sure. <laughs> Happy with the amount of cheese you got? Just enough. Just enough? <laughs> Bleating heck. <laughs>
the guy for a walk down there? Uh, or do you want to just go to the whiskey? Whiskey. Okay. We've seen whiskey. How'd you go? I got you a flight of whiskey. That will transform into a flight of fantasy. Now Billy said, no whiskey, no Scotland. I fixed that problem, haven't we? Mm. What are the tasting notes that we've got here? Scottish whiskey, scotch. Today we are trying the Island Hopper which is 10 year old Aaron, 18 year old Jura, um, Highland Park, 12 year and Talisker 10. Easy. Yeah, you can smell the ground. <laughs> it's as smooth as drinking coals. It's got an after effect <laughs> of dirty smoke. <laughs> That is that. good. That is delicious. <laughs> I knew that you'd buy that. I knew that you'd have this buy this. Um, well, <laughs> I had to get ice to pour because I do not like drinking straight whiskey. Rude. You made out because I can stomach it and you can't that I like know anything. <laughs> no, I don't. No, no. <laughs> From working in Nocturns that are like level 16 is really peaty, which means that really smoky shit. And then other things are less peaty, which means less smoky. And that is it. <laughs> right. Get us on to our next one. Um, we're going to try the Highland 12 because the Dura 18 is going to be a kick in the teeth. It smells like top level dirt, like not deep dirt. <laughs> Less peaty, you might say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sort of like burns like a mild curry. Got that like after kick which makes you feel like, oh, I might vomit, but you don't. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's whiskey for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fond of you. You're supposed to do that like you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. I think I do like when you do with wine. <laughs> <laughs> now the chaser, smooth, oaty tones. Mm. Like a potato farmer's hands have crushed the, the whey and the wheat to make this beer by hand. You're being really racist, confusing potato farmers of Ireland with... Mm. Don't be like that. Smooth like mother's milk. If you know what that's like, problematic. This is a Talisker. Yeah? Ten. No, notes are it's a whiskey. Drink. Or oh, this smells like a distillery rather than ground, which is a good start. <laughs> Immediate. Oh. Fire like a volcano. I can almost taste the compost coming out of my mouth. <laughs> mm. I like that a lot. Why don't you like it? It tastes like whiskey. <laughs> Dura 18. Dura 18. Ooh, that's going to knock your bloody socks off. Your teeth are going to fall out. No, mine are rock solid. Even though I've got a ding, gap, ding, 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 ding. I have really straight teeth. You're going to hate this so much, you're going to fucking hate it. Okay, so this smells like paint stripper. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's going to rip out the lining of your stomach, that is. Clutch my pearls. If I set fire to your breath right now, that would happen. So my Chinese uh, 
births on is a dragon and it's pitch right now because I could breathe fire off this fucking thing. It was burning my tongue before I even swallowed it. That is uh, for people with no taste buds and just looking for the joy of flavour again because there's no other reason to drink this because it's horrible feeling. My tongue is numb. It like, uh, is numb. Uh. I'm really glad that we made the effort for the next stop of our trip. We're putting aside three days to get to Lagavulin Distillery on the Isle of Isle. That stout's great though. <laughs> Catch us next week as our whiskey journey continues on the Isle of Isle. Thanks heaps for watching. Make sure to click the thumb, subscribe, say hello to us in the comments and take care of yourself until we see you next time on Never Not Sailing.